Let us worship and draw them and us kneel before the Lord, Lord of the Lord. Good morning all of you. I welcome each and every one of you for this worship and sermon evaluation service. Before we start this service, let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace to see this day. Thank you for your grace and protection and being with us through all the past days. We are grateful for this morning worship time. May your name be glorified throughout this service. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us all rise up and glorify God by singing the hymn, hymn number 3, which is found on page number 2.
and I thank Pastor authority for we have given me this opportunity. The epistle to the Romans, written by the Apostle Paul, in one of the most significant book in the New Testament, likely composed around AD 57 to 58 during Paul's third missionary journey while he was in Corinth. This letter is addressed to the Christian community in Rome. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 is a pivotal passage in Paul's letter to the Romans, marking a transition from theological doctrine to practical application. After outlining the message of God in the first 11 chapter, God's righteousness, grace, and the inclusion of both Jews and Gentiles into his salvation plan, Paul urges believers to respond with the of life of worship. In these verses, Paul calls Christians to present their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which he describes as true and proper worship. His idea of worship is not limited to religious rituals but encompasses every aspect of life. Paul then contrasts this with the words of grace, urging believers not to conform to the patterns of this age but to be transformed by the renewal of their minds. This renewal allows them to listen and live out God's will what is good, pleasing and acceptable. This passage reflects Paul's belief that the gospel should not only be believed but also lived out in practical, daily decisions, transforming the believer's entire life. With this background, I want to give a title to this meditation as Worship with Transformed and Renewed Mind. Worship with Transformed and Renewed Mind. My, sub, my first sub point is Sacrifice Living Body as Worship. Sacrifice Living Body as Worship. Some Greek scholar says, what mattered was the spirit. The body was merely a prison house, something to be despised and even to be ashamed of. No true Christian would ever believe that. The Christian believes that his body belongs to God just as much as his soul does and that he can serve him just as well with his body as with his mind or spirit. The term Soma body appears in the Pauline letters a total of 91 times. Why does Paul give such importance to the body in his books? If you look at the importance of the body, the doctrine of the Incarnation teaches that Jesus, the Son of God, took on a human body fully experiencing human life. Exodus chapter 25, 28, 25, 8 and 37, 1 to 11. In this section, we see that God will dwell in the tabernacle and then in the temple built by Solomon. He descended and dwelt there by his presence. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17, Do you not know that you are a God's temple and the God's spirit dwell in you? If anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy and you are the temple. Let us examine how important our body can be if the God who dwell in it. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and the instrument through which the Holy Spirit works. After all the great fact of the incarnation essential means that God did not hesitate to take on a human body, to live in it and to work through it. Consider the case of a church or a cathedral. It is built up for the offering of worship to God. But it has to be designed by the mind of an architect. It has to be built by the hands of craftsmen and laboring man. Only then does it become a shrine where people made to worship. It is a product of the mind, body and spirit of man. Likewise, Paul says, take your body, take all the tasks you have to do every day and offer all the, that as an act of worship to God. Here we have a most significant thing. True worship is the offering to God of one's body and all that one does every day with it. Real worship is not the offering to God of liturgy, however noble, or ritual, however magnificent. Real worship is, worship is the offering of everyday life to Him, not something transacted in the church, but something that seen that whole mankind as the temple of the living God. We say that we are going to the church and worship God in spirit. But Paul teaches in the section of this worship with our body also. We have to realize that 
wherever we go, for example, we may go to the office, classroom, and even the shops or whatever the place may be, and whatever we do, our body is seen as the temple where God lives. As it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, we should do everything for the glory of God and living in the dedication of our body. In this way is true worship. My second sub point is living beyond the world's passion. Living beyond the world's passion. In the sec second verse, Paul tells us to renew our minds and not to conform to the world. We often think about the things of this world, but many changes are taking place over time. And we see growth and change in science, culture, and society. When these changes are important, Paul teaches to live in a way that does not conform to the world. And so we do not follow it path. We should also set boundaries with the worldly influence like media, relationship, and other distractions that can lead us away from God's purpose. There was an animal called the ermine. In the winter, it would change its brown fur to a beautiful white coat. People have always wanted a fur because it's so soft and clean. Hunter would find the ermine's home when it was away and make the entrance dirty with mud. Then they would let the dogs chase that ermine. After a long run, the ermine would try to go back home, but it would see the dirty entrance and stop. It did not want to get its beautiful white fur dirty. So the ermine would give up and let the hunter catch it. It would rather die than get it for dirty. That's why the ermine became a symbol of purity. Value for its love of cleanliness and willingness to stay pure. The desire of ermine is to keep it all clean and white, even in the face of danger. Like the ermine, we must try to remind our body and mind pure in Christ. Even in an impure world, we must choose to live a good and holy life, avoiding sin and stay true to our values. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 12 and 13, Paul says that I have authority to enjoy all things, but not all things are worthy. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, the scripture also teaches to test all things and hold fast to what is good. Dear brothers and sisters, we are called to change our lives and renew our thinking to be pleasing to the Lord. As we see ourselves as living in the world, but as those who have examined what is worthy of us and do not conform to the worldly things. Beloved in Christ, we come to this chapel every day, morning and evening, to worship our Lord and our God. And glorify His name by singing praises. Thus it is seen how important it is to go to the temple where the Lord God resides and worship his name. Similarly, Paul tells us through the verses of Romans 12, 1 and 2 that in order to enhance our worship even more, wherever we go and in the work we do, we must surrender our bodies to God without following the things of the world and having a renowned mind. How then consider our body as the temple where God resides rather than giving importance to the things of the world and renew ourselves in all our thoughts, action, behavior, and surrender our body as the holy and pleasing sacrifice to God, that is wise worship. Let us worship God in this way and glorify His name, and God Himself will bless us. Amen. conclude this service with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Good Father, full of grace, mercy and love, we thank you for being with us throughout this wonderful worship. Even as we leave this holy place, we commit our hearts to the truth we have here. Just as we have glorified your name in this worship, help us to glorify your name in everything we think, see and do as we live in this world. We place this entire day in your mighty hand. Guide us on the right path. All praise and glory belong to you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.
Let's receive the benediction by faith. Now, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blameless in the presence of his glory, with rejoicing, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Thank you.